All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And I believe we are ready for our interview. Remember, I talk about today, we're going to look into uh, sexual assault awareness. And we're speaking to a young individual who is very passionate about this. Uh, her name is Adekombi Khadija. Khadija, how are you doing today? I'm fine. Good morning. All right, it's good to have you on the show this morning. Uh, it's a culture on our show to always ask our guests how they are doing honestly. We know there's a pandemic, a lot of things have changed. So honestly, tell me, Katija, how are you doing, honestly? I'm, I'm very fine. I like very, that. Very fine. Okay, so let's just uh, dive right into today's conversation. We're speaking um, sexual assault awareness and, uh, and, and the things that, you know, that are around it. Speaking from sexual assault, pedophilia, and rape. But let's even start uh, with you. Seeing that uh, you run a foundation uh, that uh, caters to situations like this. So tell us a little bit about that foundation before we move on. The name of the foundation is the Foundation for Abuse and Rape Students and Life. Okay. okay. So we have um, online seminars and public schools to have seminars with students. Mm -hmm. Then I share my number with me and I share their stories, help them get to that trauma. Mm -hmm. It's a medium of and more so, it is um, have to give people another idea. You know, some people, some people make a religion their mm -hmm. Why they make religion excuse for why they have children? And this is why I like want for people to know that whenever someone does something like that, it is because of their own personal. Personal interest. Mm -hmm. I'm from a Muslim family. I'm a Muslim family. And my parents would even in fact they are very much this. Okay. My mom does the lens of hmm. So 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 you get uh, your family support a lot when it comes to these things that you're doing. Yeah. All right. So I would also like to ask, what uh, prompted this passion? Why did you decide to in, indulge in this kind of uh, or, um, NGO? Why did you decide? Was it a personal experience thing? Or do you have people who were related to you that experienced this? So why did, why, what prompted you to start up this organization? Okay, so I never, I was not actually, I was just molested like a few times, a couple of warnings, threats, Mm -hmm. But I never really gave in, into that. But then I realized how much, how depressed I was, mm -hmm. and how it just made me imagine how somebody that is actually raped, mm -hmm. how the person would feel. Yeah. So that's why I'm into this. Interesting. I like that. It's good that uh, you decided to start up this to be able to give a voice to uh, the young uh, ladies out there who also uh, could be in a situation like that and don't have the opportunity to speak up. So it's very nice that we're doing this today. So we decided to have this conversation because uh, sexual assault has been in the rise due to the fact that there's a pandemic, a lot of people are at home, people are not uh, uh, moving as they used to and the numbers of sexual assault cases are rising. So we're having this conversation today because of that. So um, let's even start by sexual assault. Sexual assault. How would you know that you are sexually assaulted? Or what are those things? Because they can say, not until someone touches you before you can say you've been assaulted. Are there other things, or are there ways to know that you've been sexually assaulted from a little lady, um, a lady's perspective? Okay, so sexual, sexual assault, people give sexual assault the meaning that it is when you are raped. Mm -hmm. But sexual assault is way more than that because it involves um, showing pornography to children, mm -hmm. blackmail. Um, you know, also kind of pictures when you go and do that, people make sexual comments. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, make uh, giving unwanted advances. Unwanted advancements, okay. Unwanted advances or first who has advances. Mm -hmm. Who has parents? Um, this part of sexual assault that people do not really understand. 
you know, people would think once you are married to somebody, mm -hmm. there is no way the person can sexually assault you because they yes. feel like that's you are a married. conversation, yes. But that 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 happens very much. Mm. And it's on the rise too. And my focus is actually on children. Yeah. Because many many people in the many people in the Nigerian society do not do not believe this is really happening, that pedophilia exists of children that actually get assaulted. Mm -hmm. but then, I feel like it is, I feel like they know deep down themselves that this stuff exists. But it is just that thing that you do not you do not want to digest the truth. Mm -hmm. Because you know this is that you 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 do not you do not just want to discuss it with children. Yeah. But for me, it's when you know when to run, what to run from, that you know when to run. Hmm. So, so do you feel that uh, parents, like you said, they wouldn't want to discuss this with the children? Do you feel that uh, the parents need to talk about this more to their kids, seeing the fact that this is common? Yes, yes, of course, of course they need to. Because, you know, the, the kids, they rely on their parents or their siblings to introduce them to the society. Mm -hmm. So when you do not tell them what something is about, when you do not tell them that when somebody touch, touches your private parts, or when somebody touches your, or when somebody kisses your, somebody just, maybe when an uncle calls this is on his lap, mm -hmm. like you just need like make your children understand. Because they are the most vulnerable people, because if a, an adult, if an adult you would recognize when somebody is mm, touching him properly, mm -hmm. and it's now, it is now, okay, you are past that stage of, Recognizing assault. Yeah. But for children, they really have no idea what, what is assault going on. Is. Yeah. And for many people, they would not be they would not know what it is until they grow up and they remember, oh, this is what happened to them. And I, I feel like if um, like give up educating the kids mm -hmm. can avoid can prevent many many cases of assault. So if then I think it is the adult's responsibility mm -hmm. to let children understand. Because even as most cases of assault are usually from are usually from acquaintance rape. That is when the person, the perpetrator of the rape, is an is a is an acquaintance, either a family, a yeah, friend, a family a member or a close friend. Or things like that. that. So, as a parent, okay, even incest is on the rise. You can test. Yes. And people do not really pay attention to that. Like, if you, if you make your kids, okay, many children would not know what they're doing is wrong, actually. Mm -hmm. But as a parent, if you make your children understand that um, um, touching someone's private part is improper. Yeah. But allowing someone to touch it. Proper. Mm, watching porn is watching porn is improper for kids. Mm -hmm. It's not allowed. Somebody showing a kid porn is not allowed. Yeah. So they would know they would know what to they would know where to be alarmed. Yes, true, true. They know where to be alarmed and to report but if if they do not have any idea what the assault is about. If that that incest is, you know, when somebody assaults a child. Mm -hmm. The child will go on to practice. To practice, practice what he has been, what he's learned. Yes, they take but, it. Yeah. Like his playmates. Hmm. You know, I feel that. Um, do you? Would you? Um, would you agree? When they there's a saying that they say, uh, "What you don't know doesn't kill you." Maybe that's why the parents don't talk about it to their children because they say, ah, "If I don't tell them, maybe they wouldn't just. Uh, they wouldn't try. They wouldn't find out. They wouldn't know about it." So what do you have to say about that narrative regarding a situation like this? Because some parents use that as an excuse not to have sex uh, conversation, sex educational conversations with their children. For me, that, that thing is, is for the ignorant though. Because you, you know, okay, now that you know COVID-19 is, mm -hmm. you know that you have to cover your, you have to use your face 
face, face mask, mask. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now that this is the danger in this. This is the danger of me going out. Mm -hmm. So that that advice is because you know when someone touches you, or when another calls his room, you won't go because mm -hmm. you know that is things like discuss, discuss. You know, don't 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 uh, install panic into your kids. Mm. I just Very key. Them understand. You'll be like if um, if a man touches you, you get pregnant. You, you get pregnant. Or yes, that's the saying. But you need to like make. The, the your kids understand the main point that okay you know you do not ask somebody to their waist you do not ask somebody to touch your private part mm -hmm. you do not um, sex chat to people you do not receive form from people you do not send form to people you do not allow people to show you who mm -hmm. and I've just seen um fiction uh, pornography too yeah okay so I remember when I was nine the person that first introduced me to porn was a close family member. Okay. And I didn't know what means so that I took it as a movie too. Because whenever I get over there, then or like go to the gallery and check for porn. Mm -hmm. But when I realized that oh this is just you know why you, okay it's actually what you do not know that kills you. Mm. Because okay I, I imagine then okay you know because actually this time we had a neighbor. He just like called me and my mom already my mom is like adamant on it. Was not even an adult cannot even call me. It's like okay, mommy was a shop. And somebody cannot tell you it's like following the come and call him on you cannot go and you're in trouble. Okay, I think that's what we told that Okay, I'm not supposed to follow this person mm -hmm. this room. I think that was all said to me. Okay. Because now I was thinking there was there was there was nobody within the it was only mm him. -hmm. And um like a lot of things that could have gone wrong I didn't know that was supposed to avoid that kind of situation. Yeah. Well, um as uh, before we, we wrap this up, I would like to know um what are the major or the, the reoccurring cases your agency or your, your organization has been uh, saddled with in these recent times? How many, what are the kind of cases you've been handling uh, in times oh. like this now regarding the children? Incest. Incest. Incest is on the rise. Okay. Very much. And I know it would be the parents telling the, the victim, I don't tell anybody, you know, you'll not, you'll not try to no, they will, they, will, they will not try to like get get help for the child. Mm -hmm. Like take the child to do check up. I don't mm -hmm. give mental support. If you talk to if you tell anybody, mm -hmm. you would you would be okay. And I want to address the issue of stigmatization too. Stigmatization. Having had stigmatization, the main the main reason many people do not speak up is the fear of stigmatization. Yeah. And even be for something like this. People still stigmatize me to that. Okay, the first question people ask is, have you been raped? If it's not raped, then why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. And that's like of the whole thing. If you know like there's an issue affecting your society and you think you have a way to change that. Yeah. I think you should be Okay, so people will be like, okay, do you have for you know, the way you're advocating against sexual assault, people are going to think you'll be assaulted 20 times, they're not going to want to marry you. Mm -hmm. I think from the society, people are not. Hmm. It's, it's, it's interesting. Okay. Um, I, I like the fact that we're able to touch these uh, various points and the conversations on stigmatization to incest to rape um, and all the sorts. So uh, before we, we wrap this up, we would like to just uh, probably uh, give us your social media handle so that for young uh, children who would like to reach out, how can they reach out to your NGO to have this call, to further the conversation? Okay, you can text me on WhatsApp. Okay. And, uh, on Instagram. Okay, what's the Instagram handle? F A R C E online. F A R C E. 
online. Online. Okay. All right. Twitter. FARC online. Okay. Yeah, you can text me on all right, that, that's, that's interesting. Well, thank you very much for your time on the show. And we believe that these conversations, uh, people have been able to learn a teen or two, and they can still reach out to, the, to your NGO to, to have further conversations regarding this, because like we said, it's, a, it's in the rise, and it's a good thing that we're having this conversation today. Thank you very much, uh, Adekami uh, Khadija, and I believe that uh, you're going to be having a great day today. All right? All right. Okay. Uh, we just finished our first uh, uh, conversation with a very, very uh, young and passionate Nigerian who believes that uh, uh, sexual assault is something that we need to look into and uh, find ways to curb it because the situations are increasing. The numbers are rising. Uh, we know there's a pandemic, and that also has added to the, to the rise in the numbers of you know, sexually related cases that are happening in the country. So she's one of those young individuals who have decided that they take it upon themselves to give uh, the victims a voice, or the survivors, as they call themselves, the voice, to always speak up and uh, bring the perpetrators to 